Hello, and welcome to Cut Off Jeans, the podcast that teaches you how to find your truth using nothing but DNA. I'm Julie Dixon Jackson, and I'm a genetic genealogist, heretofore known as a gen genie. And I am Renee Colvert, heretofore known as the person who doesn't understand and asks questions. And I am Richard Castle, the producer, and I'm glad to be back again this week after missing last week. <laughs> we missed you. <laughs> I missed you too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you guys. Julie, yeah. what have our beloved listeners got themselves into today? Um, there are really no corrections. However, I will tell you that if you think you heard a dog bark in the interview with uh, Mike Laughlin, yes, yes, you did. That was <laughs> that was Bijou, <laughs> my tiny dog, and he uh, gave a little yip. I, I don't know. It was an Easter anyone egg. to be like, I can't listen because of the dog. Yeah, of course you can't. Everybody loves a dog. Why I have a dog chiming in. Well, my dog Buddy was very jealous when he heard another dog on this pod- podcast. Podcast. <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Did we- With a W oh, P A W cast. <laughs> Did we just get a cease and desist from Buddy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, big news. Yes, I'm listening. <laughs> Blaine Bettinger, the illustrious Blaine Bettinger of the International Society of Genetic Genealogists, okay. or Gen Genies, uh, has announced a sort of new DNA t- testing option. Okay. Okay. So, find my past, which is a known genealogy okay. <laughs> yeah. entity. Uh, they've been working on building a DNA testing capability for some time, and it's gone live today. They're looking to partner with Living DNA, which is the company, the British company, right. that yeah. that took the uh, the DNA off of the envelope or the stamp Crazy. to yeah yeah okay. So they're yeah. developing We're that technology. Okay. Yes. So uh, <laughs> pretty yeah. soon they're just going to be like breathe into this envelope. We'll figure it right. out. <laughs> they're so good. Yes. Yeah. So the test is ninety nine in the US, ninety nine dollars. Okay. Um, and you can upload your raw data from Ancestry DNA, twenty three and Me, My Heritage, or FT DNA. Holy cow! And it is free to do that. To upload to upload the raw, raw data, data from the other sites, or if you don't have the raw data, you pay ninety nine bucks, you get a new test. Ooh, from um, that's a good deal. Good old Living DNA. And so Bob's your uncle. <laughs> <laughs> we can do it for you, or B Y O R D for free. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sure. B Y O R D. Bring your own raw right. data. I get it. Okay. That's fine. I had what to break that down. <laughs> yeah, Rich is shaking his head. He's like, that's. Yeah, that's You've bad. been gone and you have not gotten better. <laughs> Just so we're clear, you didn't take the time to no. get better while you were gone. You are the acronym queen. <laughs> totally. Ah, <laughs> oh, we love a good acronym. Thank you. Exactly. It's at the top of my resume. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so speaking of my heritage, yes. I had a request from a listener named Colleen Ward, who lives in Australia, and um, she asked me to please encourage people to upload their raw data to my heritage. Oh, okay. Now, the reason I haven't done that before is because I personally haven't had a lot of luck with my heritage, and so I just didn't think that it was doing, uh, you know, I didn't yeah. think their database wasn't working for me. Sure. Uh, but she said she's had luck. Okay. So, as requested, please Upload your raw data to my heritage. Okay, I'll do it. Do it. Yes. You do it All right, as I'll soon as you get your assignment. actual data right. in the first place. Yes, exactly. Right. All right, let's move on. Okay. Uh, we know I love a, a royal story. Do you ever? <laughs> So, here we go. 100 years after the brutal execution of Tsar Nicholas II and his family, Prince Philip, the Queen's husband, okay. helped solve the murder mystery and identify the bodies of the Russian imperial family. What? Yeah. How? Yeah. Okay. So, in, um, so in 19, the, uh, the imperial family was overtaken. Well, the country was overtaken by the Bolsheviks. Okay. And they were... Uh, executed. Right. And there's also a mystery about the one daughter that they never found. Huh. And, you know. Interesting. We'll talk about that another time. Their bodies were secretly buried and not discovered until 1975 and I... uh, 1979 and identified only in 1988. Okay. The Duke of Edinburgh gave a blood sample. So they are doing it. The royals aren't afraid to give their... Yeah, I guess not. When, When was this? When did he give the blood sample? Um... Probably in 88, Okay, I would guess. Okay, uh, He gave a blood sample in order to identify bodies which were found in unmarked graves. The Duke, who is related to Serena Alexandra as her grandnephew, helped provide a match 
a, a match of DNA. Look at that. He provided the genetic key to help unlock the mystery. The research has been kept secret until now and will go on display in the Science Museum. The exhibit will include graphs of the Tsar and Tsarina's blood and details of Prince Philip's blood. That is amazing. Yeah. Um, It will (laughs) reveal decades of work that have given into piecing together the exact details of what happened to the Romanovs. A A spokesman could have been a woman, said it would take visitors behind the scenes of one of the greatest mysteries of the 20th century. Yeah, that's really cool. Isn't that cool? Uh, especially just because the technology in 88 was <clears> significantly <throat> less than it is now, and for them to still put that together... Right. You know, I'm not sure why they kept that a secret for so long. Oh, actually, I, I think maybe I am. I okay. think I missed a part. Talk about a cold case. Uh... <laughs> well, I mean, you're talking about solving something from 1918, 1919, right? <clears throat> 1918. That's okay. exactly 100 years ago, well, Rich. <laughs> Math, I know it. I guess the reason they haven't, uh, the Russians weren't comfortable with outing that information or with, I, I think maybe they didn't believe the science, but maybe they've come around. I don't know. Oh, come now. Everyone in government believes in science. <laughs> 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 We're going to go ahead and pause for Renee to cry. We'll be back in a minute. <laughs> um, so Prince Philip, when once asked about visiting Russia, said that he would like to, but the bastards murdered half my family. Oh, Apparently, boy. it's not a clean podcast. Sure, okay, when it's a quote, what do you have to do? Yeah, Your he hands said it. were tied. The Prince Philip said it, so <laughs> I have to quote him. Wow. Yeah. It is hoped the research and genetic testing can put an end to the debate over the authenticity of the remains. Russian clerics have refused to recognize them as belonging to the Tsar and his family. The Russian Orthodox Church will take into consideration the new findings and come to a decision. Interesting. Okay, so, hey, guys, did you know this? I kind of broke through a brick wall this last weekend, and... um, Did it hurt? I wore a helmet. (laughs) And I... I have one. I have one Irish line, known Irish line of my family. Um, so I was going. Uh, I I've been looking for my, I think second great Irish grandmother whose name was her last name was English. Okay, and her father was Thomas English, and her mother was Bridget Slattery. All right. Nope, not Bridget. Her mother was Alice Slattery. Right, and that is on her death certificate and on her marriage certificate. So especially if it was on her marriage certificate, we know it to be true because she said it. Great, unless she felt like lying. Sure, Um, it's a weird time to decide to lie. Yes, and and I knew she was from the Tipperary area. Okay. It's a long way from Tipperary. Oh, I knew it. (laughs) So I've been asking people on an Irish genealogy page for help. Yeah. And... Somebody finally found something, and it looked like it could have been my family, but the names were different. Okay. And I said, well, maybe the typos have to do with the... And she's like, no, no, no. <laughs> it's in Latin. There are, oh. there are Roman Catholics. Aha, uh-huh, aha. Uh-huh. And so everything in the registries are written in Latin, except for the last names. Whoa. So my... Uh, so uh, her father was... James English. Okay. And it said uh, Jacobus. Uh, okay, yeah. You would think that'd be a name, but is it? Or is it something No, it Latin? means James or Jacob. <laughs> but, and Jacob makes sense, but J, ja- I, I don't get it. Right. But, and then Alice was Alicia. Yeah, that's, that's a stretch. And so I, th- I thought, well, that, you know, can't be it. Plus the writing was so difficult. But so I, f- I went into this whole right. new. Do they have an app for that? Help oh, me they should. they should. They should. Yeah. But what they do have is, well, I obviously went and found all these terms. Of so course. you can always, you can Google anything. Yeah. We all know that. And there's also another thing that I discovered when I was researching my Scottish family, and it seems to be the same with my Irish family, and uh, the British people did this too. There was a naming pattern okay. that most of the families did there. Traditionally, they didn't always, but it was very common that they would follow this specific pattern on right. how they named their children. Hmm. What's the and pattern? this is what it is. This is the, this says by Irish parents, but it seems like they're the same in all of the, all three of those okay. countries. So the traditional naming pattern uh, until the later 19th century, the first, the first son was usually named 
for the father's father. Okay. The second son usually named for the mother's father. Okay. Third son usually named for the father. Fourth son usually named for the father's eldest brother. Oh, boy. <laughs> Fifth son usually named for the mother's eldest brother. Okay. Or sometimes the father's second eldest brother. Right. I noticed on another thing. And we go for the daughters. Um, first daughter usually named for the mother's mother. Okay. So the women follow the women and the men. Follow, you know. Right, right. Uh, second daughter usually named after the father's mother. Third daughter named for the mother. Right. Fourth daughter usually named for the mother's eldest sister. Blah, blah, blah. I like, I know that there is a rhyme and reason to this, but I like to think that it was an order of people complaining that you didn't name the kid after me so it's going to be your mom first right so, okay so get yes used to there it. you go enjoy right. and then it's his mm-hmm. mom okay that makes sense yes and that actually knowing that pattern has helped me a lot to differentiate especially in these places where there are so many people with the same name yeah that uh you know you can go well and then what okay so this fits better and then it's it's another it's another clue yeah to kind of solidify that this must be them so it's the third Son, and you don't know the dad, you can find the dad because he's named after the dad? Right. Okay. Uh, in the case of, I was looking this up last night, my, uh, my family from London, the Parkers, um, their, Abram Parker uh, was my fourth great-grandfather, and his son was Abram as well. This is, I mean, I understand that you want to name people after people, but it sounds like to me there should only that, therefore be like about eight names. Yeah. Yeah, it, sometimes it seems like it. It's yeah. crazy. Frankly, it's yeah, um, it's very yeah, <laughs> <laughs> repetitious. It's daunting. Yes, yeah. gang, it is. <laughs> um, but uh, I like it when women, when families give the mother's maiden name as the children's middle name. Yeah, that's really nice for genealogists. I bet it just kind of explains it. And when I see uh, one of the kids has an unusual middle name, yeah. that's the first place I always look for. You know that name somewhere. Those are cool clues in the line. I like it. I think so. that's all I have. <laughs> okay. Do you, would you like to take a little break? Please. Want to take a little little time off? I would like. Okay. Okay. We'll be back. If you're enjoying Cut Off Jeans, please subscribe, rate, and review. Now back to Julie and Renee. Welcome back. Yahoo! Woo-hoo. <laughs> we are ready to do the listener question of the week. This is one of my favorite segments. Is it? I love it. Yeah. I love it. You got good listeners, Julie. I know. They're awesome. I know. Them. This is actually uh, two separate listener questions, but they're connected kind of. Okay. Not connected, but they're a similar type of sure. question. So uh, this is from Robert Uton. Okay. E-W-T-O-N. He said, I did a Y33 DNA test 10 years ago. Y33 means uh, they look at 33 markers. Okay. They have different levels of, and the f- further, the more markers you get, the further back you can go, I think, is right. what it is. But they did 33 of them. Whatever. Great. Yes. Terrific. Anyway, there's a family legend that said that they had a name change about 200 years ago and that the name should be Brit. Hmm. The Y test confirmed that there had been a name, name change, but it was in fact a Britain. Okay. So... Close. That's yeah. legit. Um, he isolated the line down to a specific branch of a couple that were born around 1700 from Wales. And when they came to the colonies, they had a big family with lots of kids and grandkids. I shared this info through family forums and mes- message boards, but now I see family trees with a member of this Britain family listed as the father of our most distant Uton ancestor 200 years ago without any connecting info. They just threw him in there. <laughs> about, sure. Yeah, exactly. I don't know where there. to put you. Go in with these That guys. happens, Robert. Yeah. About a week ago, I got the results in for my autosomal test, and it seems like the connection to the Britain family is too distant to bring up any matches that way. At least I haven't seen them. I know people are uploading raw DNA to GEDmatch. I have no idea how to proceed with that. Do you have any ideas or suggestions? Thanks so much. Yeah. What are your ideas and suggestions? I have many. And there are different scenarios that I'm that because I obviously don't have all the meat of this story, so I don't know exactly. So I'm going to give you um, if this is this, then this is this. Good. Okay. <laughs> so the question is uh, for me: Are these the trees of family members that are in touch with you? Like he said, he talked to, on family websites. Are these like known family websites, right. and these his known relatives? Great. <clears throat> yeah, that's smart. Can if so, uh, maybe they understood him when he shared the information about the name change and just thought, well, then I'll just put this here. Yeah. That tends to happen. There's also uh, maybe one cousin heard that and just threw it on their tree. Right. And as is the way with people who don't 
or who are kind of lazy, uh, they, or maybe they just, just don't look understand. at other people's yeah. trees yeah. and they just copy that information. So now there's a right. ton of trees with this name on it and uh, nothing to prove it, no documentation. Okay. And that's the problem. Okay. So either way, I'd reach out to them and ask how they arrived at that conclusion and could they share their documentation. Great. Yeah. Um, help me get to the bottom of this. Yeah. And just, just to find out whether they, well, you said this or, you know, it's, it's yeah, but I think there's an easy way to just be like, I'm trying to figure out how this guy got here. Help me out. And, yeah. and he, maybe that person has information that he doesn't have. Exactly. True. And maybe he's holding on to the, maybe he's holding on to the, uh, evidence because I don't know why he would do that, <laughs> but people do. I also do think as somebody who loves it and has participated in it, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't at all. You're helping. But I think a lot of people just kind of like <clears throat> put stuff there sure. and they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. So, so if they, he gets to the bottom of just like, oh, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. A lot of people, they, yeah. they get excited when they see another match or another person on their tree that they didn't ha- that have and it makes them feel like they're getting somewhere. Right. And so they'll throw them on there. Yeah. <laughs> and of say, course. look, I've gotten back even further now. Or just like you said, if you see it, you'll take the word for it and just be like, well, that guy had it. So... He wouldn't lie yeah, to me. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so there's, uh, he also asked about would the Britons show up um, in auto, autosomal testing mm. from, 17, from the 1700s. So there's a possibility of bringing up the Britons from that far back. Cool. Uh, but you'd have to assume that they're from a branch that didn't change their name. Right. Or have researched their tree that far back. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's... I mean, if you see somebody with that name in the, in their tree and they're from that same general area, you can probably assume Mm -hmm. that these are the right ones and perhaps you can work together on figuring out that connection. Okay. It, it happens. Right. I've done it. Okay. Uh, also, yes. Upload your raw DNA to GEDmatch by going into your settings and following the directions. When you download the file to your computer, it's a zip file. Don't unzip it. A lot of people make that mistake. and I make that mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then you go to GEDmatch, register them, follow their simple directions, and upload it. Cool. And there's lots of tutorials online that can talk you through different uh, tools that are available. I was just going to say, I have not done that for mm-hmm. this exactly, but anytime I don't understand anything, I take myself to YouTube, Absolutely. and there's always 18 always. tutorials. I'm going to do a YouTube video about how to understand this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's fun. Okay, so along the same lines as that, my friend Darcy okay. has, um, there's a family legend in her family uh, that her fourth great grandfather was a member of the notorious outlaw gang. Well, he rode with Jesse James. Ooh. And he was G- Jim Cummins. And so she, uh, <laughs> she built out her tree and she, she does, her mother is a Cummins and okay. she comes directly from that line, from that area. She built out her tree and when she added that person, uh, meaning Jim Cummins, he would have been only 10 when her third great grandfather was born. These <laughs> outlaws did not live long. They needed to get to work fast. Exactly. Time's a ticket. Well, he lived Let's to like 1926 because there's a lot written about him. And therein lies the rub. Okay. So, and once again, Darcy has, uh, so she, in her tree, she has him connected okay. to her father, but he would have been 10, 10. years old at the time. Okay. And we don't, her father, or, or the third great-grandfather, who would be Jim's son, right. Charles Thomas, there's no birth certificate to be found. Okay. The legend is that he had another brother, too, and their mother was a uh, half-Native American woman that, for some reason, couldn't raise them either. Hmm. And so they were raised by another family. I believe it was the Webbs. Okay. So... There are other people with this guy in their tree. Okay. So what I did was I clicked through uh, the photos that Darcy had on her page. Right. And you can you can see, if you look at a photo, you can see the little, um, what do you call those? The icons, the pictures of other users. The thumbnails? No, icon there's thumbnail? another word. Avatar. For it. Thank you. Oh, there we Avatars go. Okay. of other users. I can never remember that word. Rich, you should have let us go for about four or five more minutes. It would have been just, enjoyable. Just, for know, all. Let's just keep saying the same words over and over and see if uh, <laughs> a different word comes out of my mouth. Nope, turns out not. <laughs> all right, Rich, we need you. What is it called? Okay. <laughs> there's, there's still another word, actually. I'm not completely. Okay, okay. whatever. <laughs> all right. So, um, and then I clicked. So that means that those people also have this exact picture in their tree. So I would click through and I would look at their tree and see, and they either had him in their tree with nothing under him. Okay. Or 
they had the exact same information that Darcy had and had him as 10 years old. Okay. So. So it seems like a toss in maybe accidentally. Um, my first instinct was that, well, the first thing I did was I told her to disconnect the two of them. Oh, smart. Disconnect the fourth great grandfather from the third great grand- grandfather. Right. That doesn't mean you have to disconnect him out of the tree. You just make him a floating branch. Just for right now so we can right. see <clears throat> what we're working And the with. reason for having a floating branch is that if he's in there, even if you can't see him, mm-hmm. he can still collect hints. I have a better solution. All right. Uh, maybe he's 10 years old and he was Billy the Kid. Oh. Mm. We solved it. Darcy, we got it. We figured it out. He's this Billy all, the Kid. This all took a turn. <laughs> all right. So I told her to disconnect the two of them so that the algorithm on Ancestry still thinks he's part of the family. And so she still gets hints. And okay. maybe one of those hints might explain something. Great. In the meantime, the third great-grandfather is still available for new hints to come in. Perfect. And a hint can't come in by, oh, I don't know, someone named Rich saying, what if he's Billy the Kid? Like a, like a direct message? It can, but okay. that, you know. Okay. I would also so- say that they should watch the Brady Bunch episode. <laughs> <laughs> or Jesse James killed my father. Anybody? No? Uh. <laughs> this has been classic TV sitcoms <laughs> with Rich. <laughs> Your listeners of a certain age will understand that reference when Bobby thought that Jesse James was a hero and then, you know, Mike Brady brought this old man on and said that Jesse James actually had been a cold-blooded killer and he, <laughs> Jesse James killed my father. Wait a minute, Jesse James wasn't a hero? <laughs> okay, oh. all right, moving on. Okay. <laughs> Bottom line is what she needs to do, Darcy has done DNA. Uh, there's no clear, there are no, there are, Tons of Cummins matches, okay. but none of them that she's been able to connect with have the connection to him. Gotcha. So I think what she needs to do is find somebody who is an actual direct descendant of him okay. and have, him take a, have them take a DNA test and see if they match Smart. her mom. I like that. I'm yeah. in. What do you think, Rich? I think um, in the words of a song... She'll be Cummins around the mountain <laughs> when she comes. <laughs> I saw Rich in the corner smiling, and I was like, oh, he's got some. He's got some. He's got something good. He Cummins looks deserves. like the cat that swallowed <laughs> the canary, too, when he does this. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> so sure. So bad. All right. Uh, hey, those are great questions <clears throat> from your listeners. Do, do, does anyone feel enlightened at all? <laughs> sort of. <laughs> does lightheaded count? <laughs> yeah. So, wh- you know what? I was more skeptical uh, at first, too, when Darcy first told me about this, right. then she sent me a bunch of documents last night mm. that had he. There are documents that say he had a son with her third great grandfather's name. Hmm. Okay. So evidence is it's still a in there. legit thing. It, Keep plugging away, Dars. I think you can do it. <laughs> we can all do this. All right, we're gonna take another break. Thank you for listening to Cut Off Jeans, the new podcast starring Julie Dixon Jackson with Renee Colvert. Welcome back. It is that time. My favorite time. Well, now you said your favorite was a listener question. I said one of my favorites was a listener question. My favorite <laughs> is story time. What is your least favorite? Uh, that's what I was going to show. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Corrections Corner when I get yelled at. Yeah. I, don't, I don't care for that. That's not fun. I don't okay. like that part. <laughs> Okay, so it's time for the Epic Odyssey Part 13. 13. Isn't that interesting? Lucky 13. And this is the one where I actually meet my biological (gasps) father, Malcolm, for the first time in person. Oh, you said lucky. Sorry. She didn't summon him from beyond the grave, (laughs) Renee. This wasn't a seance. She got on a plane and went to Australia. I guess I haven't been listening as closely as I thought. I was like, this is a ghost. Yes, he's he's still (laughs) alive and kicking. All right. Um, I will say one, uh, Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Louie, I had already met. I didn't mention that yet. But she and her fiancé flew out here in October, I think. Okay. And they they had already been planning a vacation here. Crazy. And they just happened to, you know, be coming through. So I got to meet them already. How was that? It was... It was nice. Okay. It was fun. Okay. Yeah. All right. I was, um, I w- we got along very well. Okay. Uh, we didn't look anything alike, even though her fiance thought that we did. 
Um, but he, and he thought our personalities were like, too. were similar, okay. but I, I honestly, I don't see it. What I found most interesting. So they stayed at the Beverly Garland, which is right over here. Cause right. I, I told them to stay there. <laughs> and, um, when they came downstairs, he came first and she was hiding behind him. Oh, like she was shy and She's she, nervous. and yes. And yeah. she was blushing. Like she got real blotchy. <laughs> I get that though. That's a lot of anticipation. It's kind yeah. of charming. I was surprised because she seemed, uh, she hadn't seemed that shy to me. Right. But That's it curious. was, and yeah. I, and again, she obviously doesn't have the experience that I have of kind of putting up a, a invisible sure. a facade of yes. you're going to get me, but not really. Yes, yes. yes. exactly. Yeah. So, uh, but we, you know, we got along great. So um, anyway, okay, I had, so it was a good time. Yes, you guys had fun. Yes, we okay. had we had a good time and uh, looked forward to seeing each other again. Um, so Louie I had met okay. and her fiance. We uh, we flew in there. I flew in and she had sent her fiance to get me. Okay, but it was kind of nice because you knew him already. Well, yes. If okay. she'd sent a complete stranger, that would have been sure. Well, weird, yes, of but, course. <laughs> right. She had sent him because the other sister. Huey right. was having a birthday party for her youngest daughter. Okay. And the family was all over there. Right. And she had, I don't think she specifically invited me, but she was fine with me coming, of course. meeting everybody there. Yeah. I just want to say, I feel bad for this kid who had the birthday. Yeah. Because Yikes. it's like, it's supposed to be about me. And suddenly there's this relative from America coming here. Right. Okay. She was two and it was the end of the party. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so it's, yeah. Nice I, hijacking of my birthday, Julie. Right. You know, I actually, that may have crossed my mind at the time. I'm like, you, are you sure this is a good idea? But it, get, it, was, the was, end of the, it okay. was the end of the party. Julie storms in, puts the tail immediately <laughs> on the here. donkey, breaks the pinata. <laughs> Jeez, Julie. <laughs> so I got out of the car and uh, this little kid ran up and wrapped his arms around my waist oh. and like kind of attached himself to me. Right. And I said, uh, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I'm Jack. And I said, do you know who I am? And he said, yes, you're my Auntie Julie. Oh, Julie. <laughs> okay. He was the cutest little thing. Oh, that's adorable. Yes, yes. Okay. So Louis has three kids who are all divine. And uh, I love them. Yeah, Long that's time. that's a greeting right there. It was lovely. Then he took me by the hand and led me into the house. Of course. And he said, and if you ever ruin my birthday party, right. I'll cut you. Just so we're clear, I just want to draw the line right here and now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would be emotional about that, to be called Auntie Julie. Was that, did you feel emotion or was it just overwhelming? And You know, when I'm in the heat of the moment of just about anything, including my own wedding, right. um, <laughs> I tend to not get emotional yep. until after the fact. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Does if that make sense? anybody around, I yeah. won't let myself tap into, let's feel it completely, and mm -hmm. then you're out of control of your emotions. I, yes. oh, I won't settle for that at yeah. all. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want to do that. Right. <laughs> bad things happen when we do that. Yeah, exactly. I want to stay in I control. I can attest to that. <laughs> and I cry during a psoriasis commercial. <laughs> so I'm led into right. the house. <laughs> Louis uh, greets me at the door and hands me a glass of wine. I love Louis. She knows me so well yeah. already. So, and then I was introduced to everybody, and there were cousins, and uh, Vicky, Malcolm, my biological father's ex-wife, okay. was there. Okay. And also Huey. Right. Dewey was not there. Okay. I was to meet him the next day. So Malcolm's ex-wife, Vicky, is there. Vicky is there. Not. Okay. And uh, I, I was worried about her. Yeah. Um, just because I... Yeah. You know, I, this this is sure. odd. Clearly again, there's been a fight. Again, yeah. I happened long before she was even in the picture, so that's nothing she should worry about. And she washed her hands of Malcolm a long time ago. Of course. So she's clearly moved on. We stayed there for maybe an hour, and then it was time to go meet Malcolm. I want to know, did you feel like you were part of this family? It would be so strange to walk into a party, a celebration with a bunch of family mm -hmm. that are related to you by yeah. blood but that you've never met or, you know, you knew you've met two of them, but it would be such a surreal experience to be welcomed into this party with a family that mm -hmm. is yours, but you have no, you know, history with them. Yeah, it was, uh, yes, it was surreal. Again, I have a tendency to behave like something is completely normal mm -hmm. 
when it's happening, no matter how bizarre it is. And I think that comes from, I'll tell you where that comes from. (laughs) When I was a a young performer, the first time that when I first started competing in these competitions, I was in a, I I don't need to go into what it was, but I was, this is my first time in a big time competition with another group of people. And then we were about to go on stage and somebody turned to me and said, are you nervous? And I was like, uh-oh, yes, I am. Yeah. She goes, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody you're nervous because then you'll make them nervous. What a setup. Why would she ask you that? That's so bizarre. Apparently that's the thing. But okay. I took, I have lived by that mantra my entire yeah. life. So it was, yes, it was uh, bizarre. I can't say I felt a connection right. with anyone. I've yet to feel a connection. I, I felt very comfortable with Louis. And um, my sisters are both drop dead gorgeous, by the way. So are you. Okay, my sisters uh-huh. are there. They 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 just are completely different physical people than okay. me. I gotcha. In that their faces are beautifully structured and they have really good hair. Right. And you know you know that they were the pretty girl at school. Sure. Okay. And they didn't have to tell jokes like me. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, excuse me. When I met you, you were in beauty contests. I'm just going to put that out there. Scholarship pageants. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Granted, I wore a swimsuit with high heels. Yeah, they were not called scholarship <laughs> yes, pageants, they were. were they? Yes. <laughs> Where were um, we? So you okay. were leaving so the party. So it was time to go yeah. um, and uh, leave my beautiful sister, my beautiful older sister. No, she was younger than me, but the older one. Right. And uh, go and meet Malcolm. Okay. So I got in the car with Louie and made her promise not to leave yeah. without me. Smart. Because yeah. I was scared that she would be like, oh, I'll come back and get you later. And right. I was not. Please and uh, I will tell you that this is as anxious as I've been. So we get to the house. Shaking like a leaf. Uh-huh. Terrified. Dry mouth. All of that. Um, and we pulled into the driveway. And there he was in the garage. He was working on his combi van, which is a Volkswagen bus. Okay. And I love combi vans. Aww. And so that was, I, I was like, oh, we can bond over a combi van. Great. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> walked up to him. He was very tall. He had this shock of beautiful white hair. Okay. So okay. I gave him a hug. We went inside and I met his lady friend who was very nice and his pit bull who was also very nice. Wherever Louie was, Malcolm tried to not be. Mm. And so he would lead me into another room because he didn't want to have to tell me stuff in front of her okay. because it would be different than what she knows. So the first thing I did was had him take the DNA test. Oh, of course. Yes. Smart. I knew that I didn't know how long I was going to be able to stay there. Right. So I needed to get it out of the that way. That's really smart, Julie. Yeah. Because I didn't want to... You know, I, while we were still friends, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wanted yep. to make sure. Let's get it now. And as I've said before, I did send him one once before, and right. it never got back to the company. Uh-huh. And I believe he took it. Then it was time for pictures. Okay. To go through albums. Oh, okay. So he went into the other room and he brought out these three big albums. Um, the first one was just completely pictures of oil rigs and trucks. Uh, the next one was uh, all of his uh, dogs. Great. In life. I can't knock him for I that. Know. I can't knock him for I that. Know. All right. Um, I can. I'm like, she's <laughs> not here to see your tankers and your trucks and your dogs. She's like, she wants to see pictures of relatives. That's why she flew all the way from the United States yeah. to Australia. Well, he doesn't, you know. So after those two, no. after, you know, I... I, I I would hustle along. it along a bit. Well, no, I did. Yeah, I'm good. like, okay, moving on. Right. So after he closed that, then he picked up those two albums and tried to present them to me. Oh, no. Like, I would want to take Here's those your gift. home. Yeah. Yeah. So the next album that came out was, it was, I believe, his mother's, my grandmother's uh, family album. And, but there were a lot of people that he didn't know who they were, and I did. So I was able to tell him who right. somebody was. Well, and especially, I mean, sort of, I know your family, Malcolm, but if you're estranged from them <laughs> yeah. and you're thinking about other stuff for years and years and years, you probably do forget. Well, and they're also, there are a, a lot of people on his father's side of the family right. he hadn't seen in years and he didn't know. Like he, you know, he knew his both of his grandmothers and yeah. all of those, but there were extended... Uh, there were just some people that he wasn't sure who they were and I was. Okay. Which was that makes which was interesting. Sort of sense. All right. Yes. Um 
Then, at one point, we fell on a picture. <laughs> we didn't fall on yeah, it. Okay, but we, <laughs> Our we, eyes we fell landed on a picture. upon, we saw. Yes, we landed yes. upon a picture uh, of Malcolm and my mother. Hmm. Crazy. There it was in the album, together. Both oh of my parents, together. And they were dressed up. Uh, it looked like they were on a date, and they were dressed up for something. Okay. And um, they were in front of a backdrop that looked like an airplane, like an Anset. Remember Ansetti? Okay. An Anset yeah, airplane. right. And, like, they were on the stairs in front of it. Um, and, I, and I said, well, where was this taken? He said, I don't remember. Yeah. And later I called Lynn. Actually, I sent her a copy of it, and she said, well, there's a blast from the past. And I said, where was that taken? And she said, oh, probably the Essendon Airport. She thought that there was a real airplane behind her. Oh, poor thing. <laughs> she okay. was in the picture. Okay. It's fine. Yeah, I said, Listen. I don't think that's an airplane. I don't think that's really an airplane, Lynn. Right. So, but it was amazing. That's the only picture of the two of them together. That's that nuts. There ever was, yeah. apparently. And at at the end of that, he presented them to me to take. Yeah. Th- did you take that one? Oh, yes. Good. I took that one. Okay, good girl. Yes. Yeah. I absolutely took that one. That was the treasure. That was that was basically why I was there. Yeah. Um, so I was very thankful that he let me have that. Mm-hmm. And we kind of sat in the living room, and uh, I was ready to go. How are we feeling at this point? Feeling empty? Or you're still so on that it's hard to check in? I'm tired. Mm-hmm. I'm emotionally exhausted. Yeah. And I need to go have my recharge time. Yep. Yes. Completely yeah. fair. Yes. Okay. So it wasn't, it wasn't an unpleasant meeting. Right. Uh, he was exactly as I expected. I had spoken to him enough to know, you know, okay. who he was. And there were th- certain things about him that were certainly endearing. Yeah. Um, and I could not see me in him either at yeah. all. Yeah. At all. Uh, his mother, there were pictures of his mother that... A lot of people have looked at and said, oh, my God, you look just like her. Right. So uh, it was over. Okay. And uh, we left, and we made plans to see each other. The next day, I already had plans with the siblings. Okay. And uh, he clearly wasn't invited. Yeah. And, um, but I still needed to see Kim. Right. So the day after that, he was going to bring Kim to my hotel. Okay. Because I wanted to show them both the tree I had worked on, he didn't have any Wi-Fi at his house. Oh, okay. Because he's a Luddite. Yes. And uh, <laughs> so I wanted an opportunity to show them right. what so I found come to the about hotel. their family. So we can so, look at it. Yes, and then I could, I could meet Kim then and cool. what have you. Okay. So the next day yes. uh, was a river trip. It was a water skiing river trip. Oh, boy, Julie. And I know. Can you see me? <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> So yeah. we all met and had breakfast at uh, Louie's, and then my uh, Dewey showed up, who is my brother. Okay. And I met him, and he had his two young kids with him. When it was time to go to the river, which is about an hour and a half away, it was the Murray River, um, I was assigned his car. Okay. My sister made me ride with him. Right. So that you <laughs> To have... force us to get to know each other, which was actually really smart. Yeah. I was I was kind of anxious about that, but she was she was right. Okay. Um and Vicky the mom also rode with us. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Uh the first thing I did was ask Vicky if she was okay with talking about Malcolm or with me talking about Malcolm. That's very considerate. And she was she was fine with it. Okay. So I took that cue and so, you know. We chatted the whole way. We got lost. So it was actually probably about two hours. Um, uh, but it was nice. And he was very easygoing. And he had a good sense of humor. And he laughed at my jokes, which yeah. is always good. Yes. And um, I thought I might look like him a little bit. Okay. Yeah. In pictures since then, in pictures from that day, mm-hmm. I could, I'm could. i like, oh, well, he and I look like we could be siblings. Right. It was a good day. Sounds awesome. Got to meet a lot of, of friends of my siblings, and it was a good day. Yeah. So the next day, the next morning, I had the hotel I was staying in was downtown, and it was just a few blocks from the National Library. Okay. And I walked to the National Library because that is the only place that has the South Australia electoral rolls, because uh. South Australia does not release them online, and that's why I've, that was why I never found him. Right even though he says that I never found him because the government wouldn't let him be in the electoral (laughs) rolls. Long story short, I found him. Great. So he was in there, 
and I took a picture of it, of him being in there. So he had voted, right. and he had, the government had allowed him to vote, okay. and he was in there. He's in there. So, Got it. We found him. Yes. So I met Kim for the first time. I shouldn't, you know, right. gloss over that. Um, Kim is so lovely, and so she is the sweetest person, and she has the biggest heart, and was so happy to meet me, and I was so happy to meet her. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Of this entire family, she is the one that I connect with the, yeah. the most, yeah. because she's just a really pure soul, so and, great. Um, you know, just has been amazingly supportive the whole time. So we just kind of sat there and looked at each other, which was sweet. That is sweet. Yeah, and we held hands. Oh, I love this. Yeah, she was very nice. I love nice. her. Yes. Okay. She's great. So they only stuck around for a couple hours, and uh, then they were out of there. And my friend Sharon was showing up that evening, my childhood friend Sharon oh, Gervis. Oh, fun. Sharon Gervis Latham, um, because she was going to do the rest of the trip with me, and we were going to road trip together back to Victoria. Fun. 6 a.m. the next morning, my burner phone rang, and I answered it, and it was Malcolm. Uh, okay. And he, I think he thought that we were going to get an early start, and he wanted to so that's give us some advice. Yes, okay, he wanted yeah. to give us some advice on the drive. So I was like, um, okay, thanks. <laughs> and I ke- kept trying to get him off the phone because I clearly was not awake yet, yeah. and I wanted to make it clear that we, you know, we didn't plan on making getting an early start. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're trying to sleep. <laughs> yeah. I've just had the most stressful week of my life. Yes. Let me catch up a bit. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, but, although I did think it was kind of sweet that he certainly took it upon himself to give us some advice to on make a taking dad the open call road. Of, yeah. Just yes. make sure you fill the car with gas. And, yes. Okay, thanks, Dad. Yes, yes, there was something oddly paternal about that. Right. Um, you know, but I was, I was ready. I, I knew at that moment, or not at that moment, I knew when I'd last seen him the day before that I would probably never see him again. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, we're going to stop there. That was a long 13. one. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we're going to stop there, and we're going to stop the show now. <laughs> we're done. Bye. We are so done. <laughs> Renee, tell people about yourself. Yes, uh, I am Renee. I'm on Twitter, at Renee Colvert. Instagram, at Renee S. Colvert. I've got a podcast called Can I Pet Your Dog? And I guest on a podcast called Allison Rosen is Your New Best Friend. And I'm Richard Castle. You can follow me on uh, Twitter at Castle Songs. I'm a songwriter and uh, musician. And... Apparently a producer. Yeah. And a good one at that. You're a good one. I'm Julie Dixon Jackson. You can follow the show on Twitter at Cut Off Jeans Pod. You can join our fun Facebook page. Uh, it's called Cut Off Jeans Podcast. And you have to answer a very simple question to get in. That's because we don't like bots. <laughs> and uh, you can email me at Jules Jackson. That's Jules with two O's at cutoffjeans.com. Hey. The the truth is in your genes.